involve me and I learn. So if you just tell me something, I'll forget. But if you involve me and you make me do and practice what I teach, then I learn. And I was very impressed with Sayyad Bay College. This morning I was going through some of their labs. And the real focus here, I was very impressed, is of not just learning or not just listening, but also applying what you've learned in spaces, maker spaces, and projects and labs. It's project based learning. And this is really well known to make you learn much, much better. A lot of data that shows that this kind of learning will give you much better outcomes than just watching videos by yourself. So I won't spend too much time on the data, but on the left hand side you see a bar that shows you what you learn if you just watch videos. On the right hand side you see the bar that shows you how much more you learn if you interweave questions and interactive exercises with watching videos. And a group at MIT did some EEG scans of the brain to study why is it that people learn better. And what they found from cognitive science was that this form of active learning has a basis in how your brain works. So brain simply works in a way that by being asked questions and being asked to reproduce, not just blindly repeat, but to apply the knowledge makes you learn much better. The other thing you can do with the computer is instant feedback. Instant feedback means the following. When you learn, you, let's say you get a question, you answer the question in the computer. So you ask the question, how much is 2 plus 2? You type in 4. With the computer, you can grade that immediately and tell you whether you got the answer right or wrong. A green check mark, a green tick, or a red X. You get instant feedback. Students are learning. Students are telling us that because of the green check mark, it becomes like a video game. They're telling us they go to bed at night dreaming of this green check mark. They're working harder and harder trying to get the green check mark. But if, how do we teach on campus today in, in every university in the world? You give a homework, you're given a homework, you answer the homework, and you submit the homework. Usually, yell out the answer, usually, how many days go by before you get the graded homework back? How many days go by? Is it instant? No. How many days go by? Okay, I, I'll uh, do, do it this way. And yell out the number of days, and if you agree, raise your hand. Five days. Some hands. Ten days. Seven days. One week. Two weeks. Okay, so it's somewhere between five and, and two, five days and two weeks. So just imagine the homework, you submit the homework, you get the graded assignments back about two weeks later. How many of you have played a video game here? It's okay, no one's watching, you can raise your hands. So most of you have played video games. Why are video games exciting? Do you have fun playing video games? Yes. The reason video games are fun is you get instant feedback. So let's say you're playing a shooting game and you shoot something, you shoot a tank, you know instantly you hit the tank. Now imagine if you had a video game where you shot the tank, you pulled the trigger and shot the tank, and the video game froze and said, okay, come back in two weeks and I'll tell you whether you hit the tank in two weeks. <laughs> Would the game be fun? Would you be playing all night? That's the big part of this engagement of online learning, that it provides instant feedback. It turns doing homeworks into a video game, the instant feedback. And students are absolutely loving it. In fact, there are many studies, scientific studies have shown that when you get instant feedback, students even learn better. A pretty famous paper said that the rapid feedback really improved the learning of students. And it's obvious, if you're engaged in something, if you're enjoying it, you will learn better. And with online learning, with computer learning, we can give instant feedback because we can grade one million problems in one second. We don't have to wait two weeks for hand grading of every problem. So the next, uh, the last part of my talk, 
Let me now dream a little bit with you and dream about what is the future of education. So I showed you many examples, instant feedback, online learning, learn for free. What we can do with using online learning is we can provide nearly free education to everybody in the world. edX is already providing education to more than 14 million students. And down the road, our vision is, can we provide education to 1 billion students around the world? We can. Today, how many, just yell out, how many Facebook users are there? How many of you use Facebook here? Zuckerberg will be unhappy, not, uh, not maybe less than a half. So how many, uh, do you know how many Facebook users there are in the world today? How many billions? Yell out. Let me, let me raise your hands when I, say the, when I say the number. One billion. Two billion. Three billion. It's two billion. There's two billion people using Facebook. So our vision in that, say, in that sense is very modest. Just one. We want to educate just one billion students. We reached more than 14 million, so we have uh, a little ways to go. But we can do that. We can provide access to education to anybody, anywhere, who has access to the internet. So let's dream about what is the future of education. If everybody can be learning, if everybody has access to online education, and at the same time, if everybody can also learn in colleges, what will education look like? What should universities look like in the future? So I see three important trends. And I give this talk, the last part of the talk is actually more suited to universities. When I give talks to university leaders, this is what I tell them. That this is the way you should take your education. Education will become marginal. Education will become omnichannel. Education will become lifelong. What do I mean by modular education? So modular education means the following. So today, you come to Sahyadri College, you want to get a master's degree, or an M, uh, you get up to spend one or two years and you get the master's degree. You go to uh, IIM Bangalore for two years, you get the MBA. If after six months, you stop the MBA and you leave, what is the problem? What are you called if you leave after your first year? A drop-off, a failure. Why? Any learning is a good thing. So education will become modular, which means that you'll be able to learn in chunks. And so one example is uh, we launched a fully online degree in data analytics with Georgia Tech on it. Okay, this is uh, for $10,000. For $10,000 on edX, you can now get a analytics degree from Georgia Tech. For six lakh rupees, you can get an analytics degree in one year. At the same time, if you complete just three courses, you can earn a MicroMasters. So modular means that you can do a piece of the degree and earn a MicroMasters. Or you can stack many such and get a full degree. So modular means you can stack components together, just like Lego blocks. How many of you have played with uh, Legos or with puzzles where you fit the puzzles together? That's like modular puzzle pieces. Education will become like that, where I can fit pieces together into creating full degrees from pieces. We can also start sharing. And I'm very excited that this is the same conversation that we're talking about with having with the Sayyadi College. And if Sayyadi College adopts it, they will be the first university in India to do so. So here's the idea. So we are working with uh, the IT University in Pakistan. What they're doing is they've launched a data science master's degree. You take six courses from IT University in Pakistan, and then you take a micromasters in data science from the University of California, San Diego on edX, and the six courses from IT University and the MicroMasters from edX combine and they give you the, big, the Masters in data, and data Science from IT University. So the beauty of modularity is you can now stack and you can share. You can get a piece from here, a piece from there. 
So we're talking to Sayyadri College about their adopting some of our MicroMasters and to use within the local context and for people to combine that into their degree program. And if that kind of is successful, this college will be the first college in India to adopt such a model. I see this as the future of education. Absolutely. Let's give a uh, It's risky. Whenever a college does innovative things like this, it's risky because everybody says, oh, you've never done that before. It will never work. It can never happen. But if everybody said something will never work, we would not have had the life problem. Do you know how many, how hard it was for, Ed, for, for, for Edison to get the light bulb to work? He built the filament. The thing burned. He had to figure out that he had to take away the air from inside and put in nitrogen or something else and inert before he could make it work. So he failed so many times. And that's about experimentation. It's risk taking. You have to experiment to do new things. And you need very innovative universities and leadership to do that. So I'm really very, very proud of uh, the college and Mangalore for, I'm very excited that this be the first place in India that uh, something like this happens. 20 years from now, everybody will be doing it. Everybody will be doing these modular programs and stacking them up. Everybody. But I want this one to be the first place to adopt such a model. The second is, uh, the second big trend is the omni-channel. Omni-channel means both online and in the sea, the retail shopping industry becoming omni-channel. Where people will be wanting to shop online and also shop in person. Education will become omni-channel. This means that in the future, students will be learning something online and they'll be learning something in person, going to a college. So I'll give you an example. So if you go to edX, uh, how many of you are, how many of you are in, say, your first or second year PUC? First year or second year PUC? Oh, a lot of people. How many people here are first year engineering college students? Okay, so it looks like it's a good half and half mix of first year engineering and 11th or 12th standard. So here's what education might look like in 20 years, omni-channel. So on edX, we're doing a pilot. We launched a program called Global Freshman Academy. So you can do it. So uh, what you can do, you can go to edX, and you type in Global Freshman Academy. You can take a full first year of engineering completely online on edX, completely online from the U.S. University, from Arizona State. How many of you have heard of Arizona State University? Many of you have. So you can completely learn a full first year of engineering on edX from Arizona State University. It's open admission. Everyone's welcome. Can you imagine that? Anybody can do this. And the vision of this is omnichannel education in that our vision is that in the future, when people are in PUC or applying, preparing for college, they can be completing a whole freshman year, a whole first year of college. And then you go to college, and because you've already completed your first year, you can transfer the credits into your college and just go to college for years two, three, and four. So that's on each channel. One year online, and years two, three, and four in person. Believe it or not, you can do this. You can go to edX. Learn first year engineering completely online. Open admission. There's no admission. No exams, no nothing. You can learn. And then you know, if, if you apply to Arizona State University and you get admission there, your credits will get counted automatically and you can start in your second year. Not just that. If you apply to any university that accepts Arizona State University credits, you can transfer that into any university. And could we have dreamed about things like this before digital? I see you're shaking your head. It's unthinkable. It's absolutely unthinkable that while you're in PUC, you can be learning for college and completing your first year. And, and uh, you know, you're all smart kids. Maybe you can complete two years. Very inexpensively. You can learn for free. Did I say you can learn for free on edX before? 
you can learn to pray. You want credits, you have to pay some money, but you can learn to pray. And then if you get admission to a university, you can transfer the credits and continue learning. That's Omni Channel. Last, let me talk about lifelong education. Three trends, modular, omnichannel, lifelong. And every university, every university leader should be thinking about modular, omnichannel, and lifelong. Because 10 to 20 years from now, if universities don't move in this direction, just like the taxi cab companies have been Uberized by all I Uber, how many, how many taxi, how many, I remember in India, when I was uh, in Mangalore growing up in five, seven, eight years old, you know, you had a lot of those uh, uh, black and yellow taxis. Do you see a lot of those around in Mangalore anymore? Why? They've all been Uberized or ola Everybody uses Ola and Uber today. Similarly, if universities don't transform themselves 20 years from now, Similarly, those universities will be gone. So they have to transform and change the way they think and be innovative. So lifelong education means that today, universities are focused on training students who are 18 years old. So the focus is on 18 to 22, right, that, that period. But I started the talk by saying that by 2030, half of today's jobs are gone, which means that everybody has to be learning throughout life. If you thought you could learn for four years and be done with it, sorry. You are entering into a new world. Learn how to learn online, start now. Learn how to learn online because you will be doing a lot of this for lifelong learning. Because once you leave a university and start a family and start a job, it's very difficult to go back to university. So as a student, you have to learn how to learn online because you, you will need to be learning lifelong. I'll give you an example. How many of you have heard of data science? How many of you have heard of computer science? Everybody's heard of that. About five people have heard about data science. The reason is that even the phrase that data science did not exist 10 years ago. It's a new field. Do you know that there are 3 million jobs in data science alone today? That's the hot field. Everybody wants to learn business analytics, marketing analytics. How many of you have heard of big data? The previous speaker talked about data analytics. Data analytics, big data, marketing analytics, business analytics, big data. All of these are a whole new field of data science. It's a hot field. This field wasn't even invented 10 years ago. And all the jobs are in data science. So today, if you go to edX and you learn about business analytics or marketing analytics or data science, there's so many jobs available. And most universities are not even teaching these topics because these just came up in the past 10 years. And so lifelong learning says that people will need to continue learning offline, uh, online because if new jobs are being created and old jobs are being lost, how do you get the new jobs? You get the new jobs by learning. So you have to learn to learn throughout your life. If you ask me how much of my bachelor's degree am I still using, maybe 5%. Most of what we use in our day-to-day -day jobs are things that we learn all the time. You ask anybody sitting in the front here, anybody who's working today, what percentage of what they learned as an undergraduate in the undergraduate degree, they're still using in their careers. Very small. You have to continuously learn, and particularly as the new careers and new jobs are being created. And so in order to facilitate this, we are working with companies to endorse programs like MicroMasters, which are lifelong credentials, which you can earn any time. And create certificates that you can post on LinkedIn and on your resumes so that you can continue learning throughout life. So I will just close by reminding you again that the future of education is going to be modular, omnichannel, and lifelong. And you're in a really good position that you're just starting out college, you're in high schools, and get going right now. You have to learn how to learn online because the future is going to be omnichannel, which is both online and
and in person. Thank you.